Okay, well, let's go look at that more concretely. So that was kind of the, the quick whirlwind, whirlwind tour of the segment descriptors. So we previously saw the GDTR and we saw the GDTL. We saw how those uh, point at the table itself. So now let's go ahead and go look at the table manually and we can eyeball parse that or we could just let Windabug do the hard work for us. And we can use the DT display type command and we can recursively display type to dig down into the subtypes. And we can use a type that Microsoft gives us, the NT underscore KGDT entry 64 is a data structure that Microsoft uses to define a GDT entry. So we'll essentially cast the GDTR, the base address, the base memory address for the GDT table into a KGDT entry 64, and then we'll add some offset to look at entries in it. So, you know, we'll see that the first two entries are zero, and so they're uninteresting, they're not valid entries. And so we'll just offset, you know, we'll assume that each of the things is eight. This may not actually be true because we saw that system segment selectors can be 16, but let's just assume they're eight and go to index two. Let's hop into the kernel debugger, and let's grab those commands. First one is display as quad words, the GDTR. So there we go. Entry zero is all zeros, so that's not present, so that's not interesting. That's all zeros, so that's not present, that's not interesting. And then here is the next entry. So we could, you know, display it as quad words, we could display it as D words, you know, whatever makes it more understandable to you, keeping in mind that, you know, see this has to do with ND and this, right? If you're displaying D words at a time. But uh, basically, you could eyeball parse these, and you know, as a exercise for yourself, I do recommend that you go back and look at the slides and parse through these. These are going to be the lower bytes. These are going to be the upper bytes. How does that, you know, parse? Well, these are the lower bytes. These are the upper bytes because this is bytes zero through three. This is bytes four through seven. So you could do that that way, or we said you can do it easier mode with the DT display type command. So let's go ahead and do that now. So if we do that, we saw that the raw description of entry two is that it's you know all zeros on the bottom, and then it's 009B220. And so if we parse that, it would say, okay, the limit low is zero, the base low is zero, uh, some bytes, some flags in the middle, that's not super useful names. The base middle, that would be this element right here, that's the base middle. Base middle is zero. The type, which we said is a five byte value in Microsoft's world is one, so that is a code or data segment, and then it's one zero one one, so B. So what was B? B1011. Is a 64-bit TSS. All right? That that's the wrong table. I was like, that doesn't make sense. B from this, a coder data segment. B is a execute, it's a non-conforming execute read code segment. Right? So that is kind of how you would go through and interpret these. You can see that it says present is one. You can see DPL is zero. So this would be a ring zero code segment descriptor. The limit high is zero. The system flag is zero. So, okay, they do pull that out as well. The system flag, despite being in a type, they also pull it out. The long mode, the L flag is zero. Actually system based on the bits being there is probably the available flag. Uh, they're using that, calling it system there. And then the DB is zero and the granularity is zero and the base high is zero. So each of those bit fields are just elements out of the segment descriptor as shown in these slides. All right, well, that's one way that you can look at things. And so again, I do recommend you go through and look at every single entry, manually parsing it just to you know, confirm that it matches your expectations. But I tried to make this a little bit easier for you. So I had told you to download a WinDebug extension called SwishDebug Ext. So you should have that on your desktop. And if you open up the solution file, you will have this 
plugin, you can right click on it and rebuild it. Make sure that it's set for 64 bit if it's not by default. And when this finishes building, what we'll have is a extension that we can use to pretty print the GDT entries. So I basically expanded this. So this comes from this GitHub repository via Kame. I don't know the right pronunciation of that. Uh, but we're going to use the load command in order to load the DLL, this plugin, once it has been compiled, and we can unload it afterwards. And then specifically, the msgdt command already existed. I just made it a little bit more verbose so that uh, it would print out some more of the fields that I cared about. So once you compile this command, or sorry, compile this extension, you can copy the absolute path where it compiled it to, go into Windbug, do bang load and the absolute path to the plugin. And now at this point, you can do ms underscore GDT, and that will print out not one, but actually multiple GDTs. So I had not actually said this explicitly because I was kind of waiting for here to spring it on you, but GDTs, LDT, reg GDT registers, LDT registers, task registers, I guess we haven't seen that yet. Uh, these registers are actually per processor. So I've given my virtual machine four processors and that means each processor is going to have a different GDT register in the same way that each processor has different general purpose registers. So the operating system actually has to set up different GDTs for each of the different processors. So in this pretty print version of it, this first thing is core. So this is core zero, core one, core two, core three. So my four processors. Index, so this is the index in the GT, GDT, index is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 through 8. Present, is it present or not? If it's not present, well, then it's garbage, so who cares? All right, so this is present. This is DPL 0. The raw system flag plus type is 1B. And what does that interpret to? It is a code segment. It is read, execute, and it is accessed. All right, so basically then you can just, you know, look down the line here. We've got code segment, data segment, code segment, data segment, code segment. We've got DPL 0033, so those seem like kernel code and data. This seems like uh, user space code and data. And then we've got some other thing right here, which you'll have to figure out, you know, who's using that, who's accessing it, which segment registers are pointing at that versus somewhere else. Then we've got a not present entry followed by a TSS, and we'll learn about the TSS entries in the coming section. I can't remember if it's the next section or not. But so this is basically just a nice way to dig into the GDT and see what is there. So again, I recommend you do things the hard way first. So go ahead and look at things with the raw keyword or D word output. Go look at the slides and manually parse those by hand so that you can see what you think they are. Write it down on a piece of paper or on a tablet off to the side. Then after you've written it down, go ahead and parse it using this data structure, uh, you know, cast use display type to cast it to a data structure. Go look at that, make sure you looked at the fields correctly and that they match you know, what you did before so that you can see if you have any NDMS issues for uh, grabbing the fields from there. And then finally, after you've done all that, go ahead and run the msgdt command after loading up the plugin and see whether you are parsing it all correctly or not.